Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that all three major indexes, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500, all rose for the week. And what's interesting about the move that we had this week is that the Dow and the NASDAQ have made it positive for the year. Look at that. While the S&P 500 is still down. Monday was the biggest uh, percentage single day uh, in seven weeks, but more importantly, when we look at the weekly gain, it's the biggest weekly gain we've had since July uh, 2009. And some of those key price levels of 1200 and 1220 have been broken, but we'll look at that when we pull up the charts. Overseas, we got some uh, uh, early week uh, boosts from the uh, leading officials in the Eurozone. Uh, committing to develop a plan, comprehensive plan to provide stability to the markets over there. Even though in Slovakia uh, they voted down, had a, a vote of no confidence. But overall, uh, we, we know that Germany and France came out in support of Greece. And, and again, little officials come out to support uh, a comprehensive plan to stabilize the, the area. And then, of course, just here in the States, we had Alcoa uh, kicking off the new round of earnings. Um, they did miss. Uh, but then we have a beat by J.P. Morgan, but the numbers are still being evaluated. But the real beat was by Google, which had Google back up in levels that it hasn't been in a couple months. On the economic front, we didn't have anything. Uh, Dallas claims rose back above 400000 and the FOC minutes really was a non-event. So going into our next week, we can see we have some key earnings. Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Citigroup really for uh, the banks. Apple, the first report after Steve Jobs has passed. Goldman Sachs, Intel, um, and even Microsoft there at the end. As far as economic events, we have Philly Fed on Thursday. Really probably the biggest thing for the week. Let's pull up the charts. Okay, we are starting off with the S&P 500 daily chart, and we have been talking about this consolidation range up and down in between 1120-ish and 1200, and then also up all the way here up the top at 1220-ish. So we have moving up and down, up and down, and last week we said, well, if the cycle is going to return, we should move right on up, which we have done that. Not only did we test the 50 moving average, as we did in the past, we have broken it. And notice that where we stopped here matches up with our little downtrend line here. Here is our April high, swing high, matching it up here. It was tested here as support here. And then here we are stopping, pausing in here. That's where we ended today on Friday. So um, certainly good for the bulls. We're starting to see a move higher, although on our daily, we're getting a little bit overbought here. On our stochastic, uh, RSI has a little bit more room to go up, and MACD has uh, plenty of room to go higher. So we'll see if we can make a run all the way up on the 200 here on the daily. As we zoom out on this and hit to our weekly, we can see that we are at the resistance of the 50 moving average. The 50 moving average and the 20 moving average here are resistance, and again, once again, there's our downtrend line. Um, again, April swing highs, tested as, uh, as support, little resistance here, and now here we are testing again. So this is great if we can continue to have the volume to get us above this and uh, back into this range here. You can see the bottom of this range was 1250. 
So we have a little bit more to go. And let's go back to our daily for a second. And see, yep, just above 1250 is the 200 moving average. And so the reason I'm looking at that is to see back here on the weekly. Uh, if this support area that we tested here at 1270 uh, will be probably our next uh, my next line even though I have a line in here at 1250 I'm really gonna watch this 1270 because this is where we found support on the weekly uh, in 2011 zooming out one more time to go to our monthly we'll see that our 200 moving average held up as support uh, the other thing to note is that on um, both the daily and the weekly, our PPS indicator did switch over to uh, buy. You can see right here, there's our arrow up. So our weekly just switched over to uh, uh, buying conditions. Now, let's uh, go back to daily and switch on over to the NASDAQ. And we see... A run all the way up here to the 200 moving average again here we are cycling here we are cycling we got our up arrow and we broke out of the range and now we're testing the 200 moving average that's certainly great indicators starting to get overbought here on stochastic a little bit more room to go on RSI and MACD zooming back down just a little bit our 200 is at 2700 basically and the last swing low support is at 2750 so those are two price points to watch as we come out here to the weekly it might be a little bit easier to see that uh, we're already through the 50 moving average here already through it and again uh, we're actually through one of the uh, key support levels so that's sort of interesting and again this 2750 is the next level that we'll have to watch on the NASDAQ zoom out one more time and also on a weekly you can see we have plenty of more room to go up here in our indicators finally on a monthly we can see that we are through and again yeah I'll be watching that 2700 even off to 2800 on the monthly um, although remember our monthly is still showing a little weakness still a little overbought but there is a little bit room here on RSI so we we'll are watching that 2750 2800 level on the NASDAQ uh, for uh, possible points to go after this and the good thing is we have earnings like Apple uh, Yahoo we have some tech companies that can move our NASDAQ stocks we have Citibank and Goldman Sachs to move the S&P 500 financial so we have some catalysts this week to keep this momentum going or we have to watch for uh, a swing back down uh, we'll have to see what the results of the earnings are. Let's check out some of our market leaders that we were just talking about and see what they are setting up. As we move to our market leaders, uh, what we see is some really good charts. Uh, starting off with Apple, and the good thing about Apple is that I mean it's right back at its all-time high here. Um, so even though the market is not at the April swing high we can see that Apple is so Apple just had a great week here uh, once it broke the downtrend here uh, just just a great week so Apple is definitely uh, moving up uh, let's go to Amazon Amazon made a new all-time high here uh, so again although the market is a little bit lower uh, Amazon is another one making all to all time highs, so that's certainly good for the market. Let's go on to Google. We talked about Google's earnings, and see so here, uh, just look at that gap up there. Hit the 200 moving average and got that. Let's see here, this is 559 and got the 40 bucks there. Uh, not all time highs, but we're back into this range just right here. Going back to July, um, this was earnings. So what we have to watch here with Google is this was earnings. It only lasted about a week and a half, and we fell off. So even though we're, we uh, and we closed below this range here, which puts us back in this range here in between here and the 200 moving average. So we're gonna have to watch to see what happens with Google, but Google's certainly uh, up. Goldman Sachs probably gonna be the weakest out of all of them. Remember, Goldman Sachs has earnings this week. Um, you can certainly uh, draw a price line down in here as support now. Um, 
and we're getting a little bit more sideways action versus just a downward match action. But Twenty Women Guy is still acting as support. Love to see this one get back close above 100 so that we can get a, a run to the uh, 50 million average. So I'm going to say sideways on Goldman Sachs. Netflix, the beating of all beatings. Uh, now they said they're going to get rid of Quickster and they're going to keep everything at Netflix. Uh, at Netflix. Also, like uh, Goldman Sachs, finding a little base here at 107. Uh, we'll see if we can get above... Uh, 128 here. That's our also our, our, our 20 moving average. You need to get above that so we can start making run up to our 50 and our 500 moving average here. Uh, not often that we see our 500. Uh, but at least it's starting the base. Uh, you can see the drop. We've dropped over 100 points here uh, since they announced their new price structure. Finally, we'll look at Priceline. And Priceline, not at all time highs, but at least it's moving up. So we will say sideways. Um, so we've got Apple and Amazon breaking out to new highs. We've got Google looking good. Uh, Goldman Sachs sideways, Netflix sideways, Priceline sideways to up. So the market leaders are showing us that they want to move move higher. Uh, we'll see if the earnings will be able to sustain the move. But these are also big moves, and as we said on our daily, we did see some overbought conditions. So we have to watch to make sure the market doesn't pause and breathe before we make our next move higher. Now we're going to look at some of our market sentiment leaders here, and we're starting off with the dollar. And as the market rallied, we have that inverse relationship, and we can see the dollar really kind of fit, fell off here. So hopefully, we will find a little support here in the 50 moving average, the 200 moving average, or in here at 96, uh, 76.50. We'll see if the, uh, the dollar can pause here. But uh, as the market rallied, you can see that uh, the dollar has definitely fallen off. Uh, gold. Gold has been in a nice consolidation range for a couple weeks here. Uh, really didn't get the move in gold as the market did, and it really didn't fall off either. Nice little inside bar here at the 20, but you can see, although we're going sideways, we're going sideways up. So we need some type of catalyst here uh, at this uh, 1700 price level to see if we can uh, break the 20 moving average, break the 50 moving average, and make it run up here to 1750. Um, we can see on our market profile that we are above, we have accumulated a lot of volume in here. Uh, and again, you can see that as we slide, went sideways up here for about two weeks. Um, and so we have accumulated volume. So it's going to be hard to push us lower. But at the same time, what's going to be our catalyst to get us out of this range? Finally, we will look at crude oil. And crude oil has made a run. I filled up my gas tank today and so saw that increase in price. Uh, it's making a run back up to $90, closed above the 50 moving average. Uh, we'll see if it has the momentum to get up here to $90 and then make some adjustments there. Uh, you can see our point of control at 85 below us, um, partly because we sort of have a rising five here, a big move up. Pull back, pull back, pull back, and now we've broken that. So that certainly is bullish, but yet at the same time, you can see the accumulation that we have here at the 90 price level. As we move to our education spotlight, uh, last time we talked about uh, probabilities. And the point of trading, cut your losses, let your winners run. Uh, the point of trading is to back test the system so that we know that you can have a positive expectancy. And then finally, we talked about last time that you got to let your trading plan work so that you can let those probabilities, let the positive expectancy uh, work in your favor. So if you know 7 out of 10 work and you get the first three wrong, you should know that hopefully the last seven will work. And you got to let that work out, even with three bad trades. And so that comes to a discussion about risk. And we always talk about this. What is your risk tolerance? How much money can you afford to lose? Of course, we talked about don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. But as far as your risk tolerance and the type of trader you want to be, what do you prefer? Would you prefer a trade that's going to give you a return of 100% but only works 10% of the time? Or would you rather have a trade that gives you a 50% return that works 60% of the time? Those are two different mindsets, two different trades of thought for trading. You have to determine what's best for you. Are you going for the home run every time? 
or you just try to get no base? Are you Pete Rose or are you Barry Bonds? Barry Bonds might not be good, but Barry Bonds didn't strike out too much. Are you Pete Rose or Mark McGuire? Are you Pete Rose or Jose Canseco? Are you Pete Rose or right now Adam Dunn? Adam Dunn now with the Chicago White Sox. He's either a home run or he's a strikeout. Or, or do you want to be the guy who's consistently getting on base? Um, so that's the type of trader you have to decide to be. Do you want to go for the long ball? And I know, chick lo chicks love the long ball. Or do you want to just get on base? You can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have our page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We have our free video course on high probability trading. It gives you a framework for trading, lets you know the type of things that you have as you're coming together and developing your own high probability, high probability trading setups. We hope that that will give you a gauge to who we are as coaches, how we can help you develop your trader's mindset, develop, develop your uh, system so that you can have positive expectancy and let your probabilities work for your favor. And we'll even help you figure out if you're uh, Barry Bonds or if you're Pete Rose. We also have our high probability video course, and we had such a, a a good response to our Labor Day sale that we decided just to keep our price down here. Because again, we believe in coaching, we, and that's where our main service is, where we work with people one on one and to get them to transform the trading from struggling to consider profitable. So our high probability course, we dropped the price all the way down for Labor Day, and we're going to keep it here at ninety nine dollars. It's three three video series. The building blocks, the introduction to trading, trading plans, what it is, how to develop your own, and then bringing it all together, talking about trading setups, confirmation, market internals, all of that's for you. And now it's all the way down to uh, $99. If you're looking for a futures broker, we got ones for you. Intraday margin low is $300, 20 free trades. And if you're looking for a charting package, scanning for your uh, fast moving stocks, Hopefully you caught some of those big NASDAQ stocks that moved up. It works on both PC and Macs. We have that for you also. But in the end, it doesn't make a difference about your system, your indicator, or your if you recognize those high probability trading setups, if you don't define the risk. What's your risk reward ratio? And more importantly, are you happy, satisfied with your risk reward ratio? Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.